Welcome to the channel, guys. Thanks for clicking on the video. I hope it helps you. Um, this video right here is where I've taken a four-part series I did on converting an automatic F-150 with an AOD to a manual four-speed. Um, if you want to go watch the individual parts, I have them created on a playlist. Uh, if you go to my channel and just look under my playlist, you'll see it. But uh, what I've done is kind of shortened those videos and compiled them into one video um, from start to end of how I did this manual swap. Pretty much covers everything. Um, there's not a lot of videos on manual swapping uh, these old bullnose Fords. And uh, so I wanted to make one and put it out there. Uh, there is two other guys that made some great videos, Craig909 and uh, uh, Bullford82, I believe is his name. He made some really good videos. So you can check out their channels. If, if I missed anything in my video, there's some good references. But uh, like I said, this is just parts one through four compiled together. Uh, I tried to edit it as best I could so they all kind of sync together. But uh, anyways, I... Uh, pretty proud of this video and I really hope it helps all the uh, other Bulldoze Fords fans out there. These are great old trucks. I got a 88 right here behind me that I just bought to start restoring it. So there's also going to be videos on that. I got tons of other videos on uh, Bulldoze Fords, OBS Fords, uh, tons of different vehicles. So check out the channel, hit the subscribe button if you don't mind. It helps me out. And uh, gives you an avenue to come back and see my channel and see future content that I post. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and roll into the video and uh, where I kind of chop up scenes. I'll explain when, you know, the next process and what we're going into. And that way you can follow through and it makes sense to you. But anyways, enough talking. Let's get into the video. So first order of business I'm going to do is... Uh, I already got this panel dropped right here. Um, you're gonna have to pull this panel right here. Uh, the screws are right up there and then this should come out and give us a little more access. But first thing I'm doing um, is pulling the steering column and pulling that brake pedal assembly out and swapping the new clutch pedal assembly in there. And uh, I just, I wanna go ahead and get this knocked out of the way and make sure this all goes smoothly. And if it does, we'll continue. If I completely screw this part up, then there ain't no point in ripping my automatic out and putting a manual in because I'm not going to be able to shift gears. So anyways, I'm going to get this all pulled out and uh, I'll throw a couple, you know, updates as we go. I'm not going to be able to film this whole process because I'm going to be in here in the way of pretty much all the filming. But I'll let you guys, you know, know the process and any tips and tricks I think you should know. But it's pretty self-explanatory. Once you pull all these panels out, you'll be able to see all the bolts and stuff you need to remove. Um, and anyways, yeah, I'm gonna jump into it. We'll get started. All right, pedal assembly. It's about ready to come out. As you can see, steering shaft is just loose, but you don't actually have to unbolt it and pull it out. I don't think we're about to find out. The vacuum booster is disconnected. Brake pedal is disconnected from its rod. Uh, there was a bunch of 14 millimeter bolts, uh, one eight millimeter and two 12 millimeters that held this aluminum bracket up in here. But I'll pull it out and give you a better look what it looks like. I did have to unplug this plug, unplug the brake pedal uh, plug sensor. Um, we'll see if we have to unplug anything else. May have to end up unplugging the main harness on the steering column, but we'll see. Just wanted to show you guys what it looked like before I completely take it out of there. You can see the whole brake booster assembly it's disconnected, so hopefully she'll just pull out of there. It wasn't too bad, but uh, that was the first part of it. So let me see if I can get this pedal assembly actually taken out of here without 
having to pull the entire steering column out. I can't remember if I did pull the entire steering column out last time I did this to get the uh, manual clutch pedal assembly out of that other truck. So we'll see. But once I get it out, I'll let you know and I'll you know give you a, a diagram of all the bolts that hold this clutch pedal assembly in there. Cause some of them really aren't that visible. Well, so. good news. I was able to get the pedal assembly out without having to pull the steering column out completely. Um, but honestly, it wouldn't be that much more to completely take it out. I did have to unbolt it from the firewall there. So really to pull this thing completely out. All you have to do is disconnect the linkage up here. Have to disconnect your automatic shift cable linkage right there and uh, your bolt right there. Or it might just pull all the way out of that shaft, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna leave it together if I can get the new pedal assembly in there without having to pull it completely out. I'm gonna do that just so I ain't gotta mess with that stuff up there. But anyways, wasn't that hard. Um, honestly, from start to finish, I've only been doing this for about 30 minutes off camera. So it really wasn't too bad of a job. I did have to disconnect the main harness off the steering column right there because uh, all that runs, all the wires and harnesses snake through that hole right there. So in order to pull this out, you gotta obviously disconnect those harnesses or you're just gonna rip all your wires out. But um these two bolts right here they're kind of hidden um the pedal assembly sits like this in the truck so you gotta crawl up on your dash and look for these two this one right here as well that's an eight millimeter these two are 12 and then the ones that hold your vacuum booster vacuum booster to the uh firewall and the pedal assembly to the firewall are 14 millimeters you also have to, there's a little cotter key. Uh, that's what your brake light switch mounts to. Pull that cotter key and that uh, will come right off. And that's actually what your vacuum booster connects to as well. The boost, uh, the rod. But other than that, it's pretty, pretty simple process. I'm gonna go dig through my parts bin and try to find the manual clutch assembly. And we'll do a little comparison on the two. But anyways, guys, that's the first major part. Uh, honestly, I think that's more of a pain in the butt than pulling the transmission on one of these. The transmission's pretty easy to pull. But uh, other than just making sure you don't get transmission fluid anywhere. But anyways, let me go find the manual clutch assembly. I'll throw that on the table and let y'all look at the two. And then we'll see if we can't get it thrown back in there. Great success, we found it. So there's you a good comparison of an automatic truck brake pedal assembly, manual truck brake pedal and clutch pedal assembly. I believe this is for your like a uh, neutral safety switch basically on a manual truck or to you know let the computer know you're Depressing the clutch. This is going to be your clutch pedal linkage right there. And then the brake works just the same like on the uh, automatic pedal assembly. But I'm going to get her cleaned up and greased up. But she ain't got no, you know, if you try to wiggle the pedal, there's no play in the bushings. She's pretty solid. It came out of a low mileage truck. It's just been uh, sat in the weather for a little bit. Got a little rusty, but nothing a little uh, rattle can can't fix and some WD-40. We'll get some new uh, rubber pedal covers for it and she'll be looking good as new. Anyways, I'm going to start putting her back in the truck and let you guys uh, know how that goes. 
It's a little bit bigger, so it should be a little more fun. All right, success. Getting it in was a little bit harder than getting it out. And I did pull the steering column. Uh, in my opinion, unless you can figure out some other jigsaw way to get it in there, you are not getting the manual clutch pedal assembly in here without pulling the steering column. If you got an automatic truck and you're just changing the uh, brake pedal assembly in an automatic truck, you can get it in and out without pulling the column. But uh, getting a manual pedal assembly in there was a little difficult. But she's all in there. We got our three pedals now. I got to uh, make sure you get your brake pedal switch put back on. I'm going to stuff this steering column back in there and start hooking all the wiring up and getting her put back together. Um, I would say, for future reference, if I was doing this again, go ahead and get your master cylinder bolted in first and then get those two little bolts put in there first. Uh, I didn't have an extra set of hands, so I installed the two upper bolts in the column first to kind of hold the assembly in place. Then uh, I got them snug to where they would line up. There's four bolts on the back of this uh, brake booster that slide through there. Um, so I just got my pedal assembly bolted on and held in place. That way I could just slide this right in. But uh, my brake lines and stuff are kind of wanting to pull this brake booster out of the firewall. So if you had an extra set of hands, what I would do is I'd get somebody to go ahead and hold that brake booster against that firewall for you and uh, put the pedal assembly on that. Bolt the pedal assembly up to the brake booster first, then bolt those two uh, upper bolts that kind of bolt into the dash, bolt those in that way. But either way it works. Um, but yeah, she's in there. It was, uh, it was a little bit of a bear getting it in. Just one person. If I had a helper tonight, uh, it would have been a lot easier. But everybody's already asleep. So I'm out here burning the midnight oil. But anyways, yeah, I'm going to slap this column back in, hook everything back up, get the dash put in it, make sure she still cranks. Um, as of now, if I hook my shift rod back up, I can still, you know, drive the truck as is. I just got an extra pedal there doing nothing, but I'm gonna get it all slapped back together. Well, that's a wrap. She's got a fun pedal now. Fired her up, everything still works, all the gauges, brake lights. It was a success. First part of the auto to manual swap complete. Overall, it took me about uh, three hours uh, from start to finish. And that's with filming and stuff. So you could probably knock it out in two hours if you're good. Uh, if you're not good, <laughs> it might take you a whole day. But it's definitely doable. If you've ever worked on trucks, and uh, I'm sure if you're watching this video and doing a auto to manual swap, you've obviously worked on trucks before. I would say it's a... Uh, Pretty easy. I mean, you're, you're not trying to figure out or engineer anything. It's all just unbolt and swap. It just takes a little time figuring out how to Jenga everything out of there. But So this next video I'm about to play is the second part of the series on how I installed the clutch master cylinder on the firewall of these trucks. It's super simple and easy to do. So let's get into it. From the factory, Ford did us a solid and put three little dimples right there in that firewall beside your brake booster. Those are gonna be where you're gonna drill the holes to mount your new uh, clutch master cylinder. It's gonna be a 5 16 top and bottom hole and an inch and a half hole saw in the middle to clear the cylinder. I got it laid out over here. Simple as that. I went with the Dorman because it is all metal. There's the part number if you need it. We got our inch and a half hole saw and uh, our 
5 16 drill bit. And that's all you need to install this in your firewall. It's pretty simple. But Oh, what's up, Rooch? You coming? You coming to help? You look a little sleepy. You been taking a nap? But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, holes drilled up and see if we can't get her mounted up in there. Get a little left-handed drill action going. insulation there no biggie now my hole saw bit is a little worn out so this might take a second but she should get the job done all right as you can see we got our top and bottom bolts drilled Again, those are 5 sixteenths. The whole saw bit size is an inch and a half. Let's see if she fits. There we go, like a glove. Happy with that, pretty easy. Took a couple minutes. There is a gasket on here and I am gonna paint that, that way no rust gets behind there. I know she's already got some rust on her, but I'll prevent all we can. But anyways, that was pretty easy. Well, it's a little difficult to see, but I got the two bolts on it. I put a washer on the top just to give it some extra reinforcement. These bull noses have a uh, habit of the metal actually cracking over a long time, pressing on that clutch constantly. Uh, there are reinforcement brackets you can buy for these. Um, I don't have one on hand, so I just put that washer up top. Couldn't really get a washer on the bottom one because of that plate right there around the steering column, but she's in there and tight. So next is hooking up the linkage from the master cylinder to that little pin right there that hooks to the clutch pedal itself. All right, got the linkage hooked up, got it adjusted, got a cotter key in there so it won't come off. I'm not sure if there's a bushing that goes on there. That way there's not middle metal contact. I'm gonna have to research that. If there is, I'm gonna go back and put that back in there. Middle metal contact's never good. But anyways, that was pretty simple. That was a 10 millimeter uh, nut on that adjustment rod. It just pops right into the master cylinder. Once you pop that rod into that uh, clutch master cylinder, it cannot come back out. So just a heads up on that. So make sure you uh, get it right. Well, boys, that's a wrap on the clutch master cylinder install. Went a lot smoother and easier than I expected. Pretty happy with it. And uh, on a scale of one to 10, I'd say the hardest part, which would make it a uh, depending on if you're a chunky boy or a skinny boy, is getting up under there and getting them bolts actually installed on it. Uh, it'd be easier if I just pulled this bench seat out. I'd have a lot more room, but we ain't gonna do that. It's done, so whatever. All right, so the next clip I'm about to roll is me actually installing that trans tunnel and uh, just going into a little detail about how to do it and uh, what some of the things you might run into while you're doing it. So let's roll into that. Uh, these trucks, from every one of them I've ever seen without carpeting them, the automatics have, you know, where the trans four wheel drive trans tunnel would go. It's already like stamped into the sheet metal of the floor. So it gives you a really good idea of where you need to cut. Um, I'm gonna start pulling this carpet up. I'm gonna have to pull a couple of these trim panels out of there 
That way we can make sure we pull that carpet up without ripping it. But other than that, it shouldn't be too hard. I think that's just gonna be the most difficult thing. Uh, really, all you're gonna need for this is sawzall, some cut off wheels, whatever your favorite cutting tool of choice uh, for sheet metal. I'm gonna flip the camera around and we'll jump into it, see how it goes. So there's our manual trans tunnel cover. You can see it gives you a little bit more room to put a manual transmission in there. Honestly, this transmission that I'm swapping in here is so small. I think we could just get away with cutting a hole in the floor, but I'm going to do it right and uh, put this trans tunnel in there. The best way to do this and what we might end up having to do, depending on how everything goes, is pull this bench seat out of there. But I'm going to try to do this without pulling the bench seat out. I'm going to pull these plastic uh, door jam panels off right there. I'm going to pull this panel off here and on that side. And I think that carpet should fold back out of there. We'll lay it up against the seat. Uh, getting it under the gas pedal might really be our only thing that's a little difficult. And fingers crossed it doesn't crack up or tear when we fold it back. I figured I'd throw this clip in here. This is one of my favorite parts about working on old trucks is uh, pulling these old plastic door seals off and digging through 30, 40, 50 years of old grime. You never know what you'll find. Today, I got a bunch of pennies and one nickel. They were all from the 80s and older, so I don't think these Plastic trim pieces have ever been off this truck. Um, if they have, whoever took them off, they were pulled the change out. But pretty cool. You never know what you'll find. One day I'm hoping I find a diamond ring or some gold or something. But a couple cents ain't bad. We'll put it in the piggy bank. Put it towards the hot rod fund. But all right, carpets up. Bad news. It did kind of tear in some spots when I was pulling it up, up near that gas pedal and stuff. But the good news is floor pans are solid. Just a little bit of surface rust. Really the only thing that's rusted over there is that little underneath there. That's how you get to your cab mount bolts. That side's super solid. This side's even better, so I ain't gonna complain. As you can see, like I was saying, you have a pretty good template for where that trans tunnel cover mounts. So I'm gonna set that on top of there, get me a good idea of where I wanna cut, how much I wanna cut out. But uh, yeah, I just looked on eBay carpet vinyl kit for these trucks is only like 150 to 200 bucks so all in all not so bad if i gotta replace the vinyl honestly i probably should It'd make this truck look a little better but uh if i ain't got to that's always better but anyways i'm gonna get that trans tunnel on there let's go ahead and set it on there and see what it looks like So there you go. All right. Got a pretty good idea.
great success. Well, that's a floor delete. The old crappy AOD. Let's see how I did. I like it. Plenty of room. Still got the floor under here just for added strength. You can always cut more. You can never, well, I mean, you can weld in a new floor and replace what you cut out on accident, but uh, measure once, cut twice. <laughs> just kidding. Measure twice, cut once is what I've been told. Or sometimes I like to measure 10 times, cut once. Or sometimes we just wing it like this. But I had a pretty good idea. I mean, all, all we needed was a lip so you can screw this trans tunnel down. I made sure I left a decent lip and uh, we can always go back and cut more. But from the other videos I've seen of guys doing this, some of them cut a small hole, some of them cut this whole thing out. So we'll see, we'll play it by ear. But uh, I'm happy with this right here. We'll get uh, some sheet metal screws thrown in there. Lay the carpet back down. Cut out uh, where that shifter boot or shifter comes through, and where this shifter boot mounts. And uh, put the carpet back under, all the trim back in, and that's the job done. Not too bad. All right, in my defense. These are really good sheet metal screws. Next order of business, reinstalling the carpet. Let's see if we can do this one-handed. Now, I forgot to say this earlier. When you're pulling this carpet out, what I found was easiest to get it out from underneath them pedals was actually pull up slack in here and then stuff it under there yeah we're up pretty good around that gas pedal there we go get it back over the little floor switch huh it don't look horrible but it ain't up to my standards i think i'll order some vinyl floor for this and that'll be another project on the list but it'll do for now i'm gonna get all these plastic trim pieces back in and uh i might actually not cut that hole out just yet till i am literally ready to stick that shifter through the floor that way, if I want to drive this truck, I ain't got a bunch of fumes coming through the floor on me. She's all buttoned up. Panels installed. Reinstalled, I should say. That crack definitely got bigger. And the one on the other side opened up more, too. So I think it's really inevitable if you're trying to save these vinyl floors. They probably just ain't gonna make it. Oh, they're so brittle after this many years. If you barely touch them, they were just ripping apart. So if it don't bother you, I mean, you could throw some floor mats in there and probably cover it up. If not, like I said, on the old jungle webs, eBay, and you can buy them straight from some carpet companies. Carpet kits about 150 to 200 bucks, carpet or vinyl, whatever you wanna go with. Today's D-Day basically, where Ripping the old automatic out and preparing everything for the new manual four-speed to go in. 
Um, it's going to be fun. Probably going to end up covered in transmission fluid. So uh, that'll be cool. But uh, hopefully we'll try to get most of it in the bucket. But every time I mess with this stupid AOD, because there's no drain plug on this uh, pan, uh, it, it just always ends up going everywhere. So anytime you pull a transmission, you're getting trans fluid on you. It's just inevitable. Um, but anyways, I'm going to start off by, well, first we started off by getting the truck about three foot in the air because it's so low. Um, and then I got the rear wheels chalk. We got jack stands under it. So next order of business is going to be pulling the drive shaft. Um, I'll take that back. <clears throat> first order of business is going to be draining the transmission fluid out of it. And, uh, then we're going to take the drive shaft out. Start disconnecting all the transmission lines, speedo cable, uh, pull the starter, and then uh, pull pull the cross member transmission, rear transmission mount, and then it's just you start pulling your bell housing bolts, uh, torque converter bolts, and all that, and she should come out of there. So, anyways, guys, I'm gonna jump into it, flip the camera around, and we'll start this uh, process. So, so let's get her drained. Just like I thought. Oh, so I'll let that drain here. And uh, there's a lot of fluid in these transmissions, surprisingly. So, got my big five gallon bucket. That's brand new transmission fluid. Basically, I probably got less than 100 miles on it, but oh well. Well, we'll let that drain. Um, probably gonna pull off these exhaust pipes. Just to give me a little extra room. May just end up taking the whole header off, actually. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be in the way or not. We'll see. But uh, I got to take these headers off anyways because I'm putting GT40 heads on this. But I was wanting to leave them on here just so I could test this transmission. But anyways, uh, next order of business, uh, pulling the drive shaft. But we're going to let this drain some more. That way when we pull the drive shaft out of the tail shaft, Nothing comes pouring out of there. Well, I got the drive shaft taken out and the fluids drained and some of the other miscellaneous stuff down there unhooked. But uh, having to take these headers off, I got the right hand side off the problem. This side, I'm having trouble getting that bolt. So Jace is in the engine bay taking the last bolt out for me because the truck is uh so high i can't reach it so anyways once we get these headers taken off and the starter unbolted i can start taking the bell housing bolts off and uh should be able to pull that trans out it's a different day i gotta apologize to you boys and girls i uh didn't film the whole process of removing the transmission uh, once i got under there I started getting grease and transmission fluid all over my hands. Um, it was just too hard to, to work the camera and I don't want to mess my phone up. Uh, my wife would probably be pretty mad if I, if I destroyed a $1,500 phone trying to film a YouTube video. But uh, anyways, I just, I uh, couldn't film it. I apologize. But I mean, once you guys are under there, it, well, first off, Every truck's going to be different, you know, models, years, they all range. Everybody's got different transmissions, automatic versus manual, you know, AODs and uh, whatever. I mean, I don't know what you got in your truck. So anyways, that, that process is really going to be different uh, for everybody. But essentially, it's just uh, pulling your bell housing bolts, unbolting your uh, torque converter from the flywheel and all that, um, pulling your flywheel off. Uh, I got the starter unhooked. I got those headers out of the way, as you saw in the last clip. My little buddy helped me with that, so I appreciate appreciate him. And uh, anyways, uh, I completely took the cross member out and just got that out of the way. Uh, it's only a few bolts, and it makes life a lot easier if you just completely take that thing out of there rather than just unbolting your transmission mount. 
Um, but other than that, it was, it was easy. Uh, I ended up <laughs> taking a couple extensions and just making me a super long extension on the end of my impact. That way I could reach up there and get those bell housing bolts out. But, uh, after I, after I took the bell housing bolts, disconnected the transmission lines, um, disconnect, you know, disconnected my, my shift linkage. It, it came out of there really easy. Uh, I have a transmission jack. If you don't have one of those, highly suggest getting yourself a transmission jack. It makes life a lot easier, unless you got a buddy that can help you. Um, you can do it with a floor jack. It's just a little dangerous. Um, back in the day when I did one of these, I actually, uh, the transmission fell off the uh, just regular old car jack because it's so unstable and actually chipped a piece of my bell housing off. Luckily, I could still bolt the transmission up, but I've I, you know I've seen other guys drop them, break their whole bell housings, and it can cost you a lot of money, a lot more than what a transmission jack would have cost you. So anyways, just food for thought, but I apologize for not filming that process, but uh, we're gonna jump back into it. All right, I'm underneath my truck. As you can see, I had a real good oil leak even before I got this truck. This thing's probably been leak leaking for years, but this seal that goes around your crankshaft, that is your rear main seal. And it is literally a couple dollar part. I'm replacing mine with this Felpro. Felpro makes uh, great stuff used them for many years can't complain but anyways all you gotta do is get the old seal out of there you can just take a flathead screwdriver get up under there pop it out um also good to have you know you can get yourself a little pick but whatever just try not to mar up any surfaces you don't want to mar up your crankshaft or the block itself or else you're not going to get a good seal Anyways, you just pop that out, and once I get that popped out, I'll show you how to put the new one in. So what I just found was the easiest, was instead of trying to pry up from this way, to actually just pry from that way and pop it out. And that way all the pressure is going straight into this seal, and you can't, you know, you might could put a little more on the outside of this crank, but that's not your sealing surface, so really good way to not mar it all up. Let's go ahead and get uh, some oil on the floor here. Make sure you got a rag handy. We'll let that uh, drain for a second here and I'll slap the new one in. So with the Felpro gasket, it actually comes with this little white ring that actually helps locate and install your new uh, seal. So all you gotta do is, uh, I like to put a little oil in my seal and the plastic, uh, white plastic piece. Helps it just slide into place without getting marred up or anything. Just put it right over the back of your crankshaft and you're just gonna lightly, uh, I got a rubber mallet right there. I'm just gonna work my way around that seal, trying to get it to go in there as even as possibly. You don't wanna Put it in there and get it all cocked. Um, you're going to mess that seal up and you're going to have a good leak for uh, till the next time you pull the trans out. So anyways, let me uh, get that uh, worked in there and show you the finished product. All right, there you go. That's the finished product. New seal in there. Got it cleaned up. So if you buy a good clutch kit, um, it should come with your pilot bearing. Um, some of them do, some of them don't verify that beforehand. Uh, these are cheap, so you could always buy an extra and just have it on hand. That way, if your shows up and it don't have one in it, you're not having to run to the parts store, but I'm going to, they come pre-greased. I'm going to put a little bit more in there just for added insurance. And I actually like to grease the outside of it. That way, if you ever got to replace it in the future or for the next guy, it is not freezed in there and rusted. You're going to want to find you a socket that uh, fits around it nicely. 
you don't want to be hitting that actual bearing surface or you're going to screw your bearing up. You're just wanting to hit this outside metal. This one fits over it perfectly. It's an impact socket, so it's not going to mar up. And uh, just get you your uh, favorite hammer. Or as old Vice Grip Garage on YouTube likes to say, your fam favorite uh, Tanya Harding. And uh, pound her in there. <laughs> I'm actually going to take some uh, sandpaper and just clean out a little bit of surface rust that's in the back of my uh, uh, crankshaft because there's actually never been a pilot bearing in there because it's always been a uh, automatic truck. So I'm gonna clean that up just that way everything goes together a little more smoothly because um, this is a precision press fit. So if you got a lot of rust in there and you're trying to pound this thing in there, you're probably gonna end up messing something up. You're gonna mess that up and that bearing's not gonna turn smoothly and you're gonna be ripping your whole transmission out just to replace this daggone 10, $15 bearing. So little added insurance right now can make things a lot easier in the long run. So I'm gonna get some uh, sandpaper, gonna find it and we'll crawl under the truck and uh, get it in stock. All right guys, I'm gonna try to get y'all the uh, best video I can under here. A little difficult to film, not not this camera over and stuff, but I'm just cleaning up this surface that this pilot bearing's gonna go in there. Just a little extra insurance to make things go smoothly. I'm gonna spray it out with some brake cleaner here. being real liberal with that stuff. All right. Now I got this little grease on there. This is your backside. So if I'm guessing correctly, I haven't researched this, but I'm guessing um, these little notches right here, I'm assuming are, if you ever try to Replace this. I'm, I'm guessing the little fingers on your puller. It's a good spot for your fingers to go in there and have a good surface to, to uh, you know, grab onto so you can pull this out if you ever got to replace it. But I'm going to push it up in there. Try to get it nice and flush. Make sure she's got a good, good start. I'm gonna give it a go with my rubber mallet first. Oh, see, that's what you don't want. You don't want it cocking on you. Just needed a little persuasion with the, the bigger one. Oh, I love. Don't you just love working on cars on the ground? I can't wait to get a lift one day. Car lift. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this pounded in here. I'm gonna turn this camera off. I'm sure you don't want to watch five minutes of me pounding. But y'all get the idea. Just make sure it goes in there real flush. All right, she's in there. You can tell uh, because of the way that it is. <laughs> uh, no, it's in there nice and flush with the back of the crank. And the bearing spill spins good inside. That's how you know it's good to go. If you press it in there and that bearing inside there is not spinning... You better go ahead and yank that thing out and put your new one in because you're going to have problems. So. All right, next order of business. Putting the uh, shield on there and mounting up our uh, flywheel. Okay, I got my parts laid out. My new flywheel. Got all my bolts cleaned up. That way they go in nice and easy and you can get a good torque on them 
if they're all dirty, you know, like that, you're not gonna get an accurate torque when you torque them down. So make sure you clean your bolts. This plate right here has gotta go on first. So make sure you install that first because once that's in there, if you want to get that on there, you got to take it all back apart. So if you you get uh, all the way through installing your flywheel, getting your clutch all lined up with your clutch tool, getting it all set. I've even seen guys go all the way, you know, to mounting their daggum transmission and realize they left that out. So make sure you don't forget about this guy. Let me grab the, this is the automatic one that came out of it. They are different. So you can see there's a big difference. So don't reuse your automatic one. Um, I did see one guy, he accidentally put the automatic one back in instead of the manual. And it didn't affect the drivability of the truck, but you know, he wanted to go back and redo it. So that meant him pulling out his entire transmission. So it's the little details that make the big difference. Um, also on these new flywheels, they got a protective coating on there. So spray some brake clean on there and get that coating off before you mount your clutch. So you don't have any issues there. <clears throat> you don't have to worry about indexing this flywheel. It's very hard to tell, but those bolt holes are a slightly off. Uh, they're, they're not a symmetrical pattern. So it will only bolt up to your crankshaft one way. So you don't have to worry about uh, indexing. That was something I was worried about when I actually pulled this motor out of the transmission before I started, or excuse me, when I pulled the transmission out of the junkyard and got the original flywheel I didn't think to, you know, it, notate there was some way that it was specially indexed to the crankshaft because these are balanced fly uh, flywheels. This is a 50 ounce flywheel, I believe like 80s and up. Uh, as far as the F-150s use a 50 ounce flywheel and like the older 70s motors, 302s, manual transmissions, they use a 28 inch, 28 ounce uh, flywheel. So. Just do a little research to make sure you're putting the right flywheel in your truck, but you don't have to worry about orientation on these. They'll only bolt up one way. So anyways, I'm gonna get all this stuff transferred down there and start bolting it up. All right, I got my flywheel and plate. Uh, I'm not sure what they call this plate. Uh, consider it like a dust cover maybe. Not sure what the technical name for it is, but anyways, I got my shield on there. And just a quick little tip, that shield, while you're installing this flywheel, is gonna wanna keep falling down. So just put you a bolt on each side. Uh, there's dowel pins that it lines up on on each side. But throw you a bolt in there, and that'll hold that shield up for you. That way it don't keep trying to fall down in your face, but it's gonna show you. Got that flywheel mounted. As you can see, these three holes look perfect, but these ones don't line up. So it's just like a sixteenth of an inch off, and it just protects you from not being able to mount that flywheel incorrectly. But I'm gonna get it lined up correctly, get all the bolts in, and then you're gonna want to torque it down. Uh, Got to look the torque spec up. I think it's either 78 or like 84 pounds of torque. But uh, we'll get it mounted up and then move on to the next step. After a quick Google search, we're looking for 75 to 85 pounds of torque on the flywheel bolts. So I got my handy dandy torque wrench set to 85. And you're going to want to torque it down in a star pattern. So. Let me get under the truck and I'll show you. All right. If you're new to torquing stuff down, a star pattern is just like you torque your wheels. If you, well, if you never torque your wheels, you're about to learn something, but you'll torque this one. 
Go down to here. Go down to there. 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 You know, there's different ways to do it. You can go to here to here. There, there, there. Or there, there, there. You know, it ain't rocket science. You just don't want to torque them down in a circle. Because when you torque stuff down in a circle, um, you can torque it down cocked. And then you're going to have cranking issues with your starter lining up. So just make sure you torque it down where it's sucking itself down flat and not sucking itself down with the top tilted down or something like that. But like I said, we're looking for uh, 75 to 85 pounds of torque. I always like to go on the high end. A little extra torque never hurt. Now your motor might want to spin while you're doing this. I'm not sure if mine's going to do it or not. But if it does, just find some way on the front of the motor. Put a breaker bar up there or something with a socket on the... Uh, one of the... Uh, uh, damp uh, balancer uh, bolts up there and just kind of wedge it in there so the motor can't turn but we're gonna see what happens here yep mine's on the turn all right well let me get it uh where it, the motor's not gonna spin and then we'll continue this torque down process well i made a little boo-boo I learned that there's actually multiple length bolts that the internet recommends for your flywheel. And I installed the wrong one. I actually used the bolt from my flex plate. And uh, that is not the right bolt. So when you're doing this swap, do not use your flex plate bolts. Get flywheel bolts, because there is a difference. Um, let me flip the camera around and show you what I learned. So, as you can see, that middle bolt is nice and stripped. That is your stock automatic flex plate bolt. And as you can see, the threads don't go all the way to the end of it. So, when I was trying to torque it down, I was only getting like six threads of engagement. And I literally stripped every single one of them. Thank God I didn't actually strip uh the threads in my uh crankshaft but just for some insurance i went ahead and got a 7 dash 20 tap and cleaned them up but they were in really good shape so man i really uh dodged a bullet there this is what i ordered um and everybody on the internet said was the right uh bolt that is a dorman 14.55.7 and you can see 7 sixteenths dash 20 by 900 thousands. Um, Dorman also makes another one that wasn't in stock around me and it was going to take forever to get to me. That is 7 sixteenths dash 20 by 100. So it, it's an inch. Digging through all my stuff, I remembered when I actually took this transmission and flywheel out of the junkyard. I kept the OEM uh, manual flywheel bolts. And as you can see, there is a big difference. You're getting a lot more thread engagement because your flywheel is a lot thicker than your flex plate. Um, I'll put the doorman beside it. It's kind of kind of hard to compare. Let me do it this way. But you can see the doorman, you're still not getting as many threads on the back of your crankshaft as a OEM uh, flywheel bolt. I also ordered these ARP. They're 7 sixteenths dash, uh, it's supposed to be dash 20. Somebody actually labeled this package on, but I put a, a thread gauge on them and they are 7 sixteenths dash 20, but they're one, 0.250, so an inch and a quarter long. So they're actually longer than your OEM bolt. The only thing is uh, the heads are rather uh, thick. So I wasn't sure if they were gonna interfere with the uh, clutch and all that. So I'm just gonna go with the OEM bolt 
with some red Loctite to make sure they don't back out and go anywhere. So anyways, that's just the uh, tech tip of the day. Learn from my mistake because I almost made a catastrophic mistake. All right. We got it all mounted up, pressure plate on. Got all the new ARP pressure plate bolts installed. Looking pretty good. There's the uh, ARP torque sheet, recommended foot pounds. And that's your clutch install tool. You wanna make sure that goes in there nice and easy, lines up with your pilot bearing. When you install this pressure plate, uh, you install your clutch first, obviously, with this tool in it, and that helps line everything up. And then you want to torque that down in a star pattern as well. That way it seats nice and flush and not you're just not tightening one side down and pulling and cocking it because then this tool won't line up well. And uh, you'll know if you did it wrong, if you can't pull that thing out or it's real hard to pull in and out. Pretty simple and uh, not too bad of a job, but next order of business is uh, mounting the transmission up. I already cleaned up the transmission. I'll show you that and show you how to put your uh, throw out bearing on there. Here's the coveted four speed. That is your throw out bearing. It slides right into your uh, clutch fork right there. There's a little ball on the back of that that your clutch fork has two uh, clips it clips onto there just make sure your uh, shaft right there is a uh, nice and smooth put a little grease on it i like to put a little grease on the actual input shaft that's going into the uh back of your uh bell or back of your motor your crankshaft and uh i like to put extra grease right there where it goes into the uh bushing or technically this is a bearing that I put in there but uh pretty simple and you just want to before you put it in make sure your front seal ain't leaking if it is go ahead and replace that and make sure you got it in neutral so when you put it up in there you may have to turn this uh, input shaft to get it to line up right and go in your clutch but other than that it's pretty simple and uh, always replace your throw out bearing um, they go bad pretty easily, so it's just a little added insurance going ahead and putting a new one in there. But anyways, I'm going to get it slid under the truck here and see if we can't get her mounted up. Good news, she bolted right up. Got the Speedo cable hooked up. Trans mount bolted to the cross member. Cross member bolted back in. Everything went smoothly. Got the shifter up through the floor so wasn't too bad I used my jack there and ended up using some uh, ratchet straps to kind of give me some extra hands just to hold it in place ran the ratchet straps from frame to frame and uh, they worked real well uh, just acting really as an extra set of hands so if you got some small ratchet straps Get them out if you ain't got a helper, and that should help you just kind of hold it steady and get stuff exactly lined up how you need it. Um, I actually seen a, another guy on YouTube. I'm sure y'all know him, Vice Grip Garage. He uh, he talked about that trick, and I used it this time, and it worked really well. So. Anyways, next order of business. Um, bolting the drive shaft back up. Getting our new starter in. I'll get up... Uh, off this ground here and tell you all about the starter situation when you're doing a automatic to manual swap i didn't know this um but after doing some research the manual and automatic starters look almost identical but this cone uh is actually a little bit different or maybe i'm not sure if it's the cone length or just how far that appendix comes out well there is a difference um i believe and this is you know different things that are said on the internet so take it for what it's worth but some of the old timers were saying a manual starter can bolt onto an automatic and still work
but an automatic can't bolt up to a manual and work. So I'm not sure, but if you're in a bind, you might could throw an automatic starter onto your manual to get you out of a you know sticky situation. But anyways, I went ahead, picked up this new starter right here for a manual. Just got to get that installed. That's easy. Uh, literally just these two bolts. You guys know how to bolt a starter in, I'm sure. And then after we get the drive shaft installed, last order of business uh, for right now is uh, mounting this slave cylinder in there and bleeding the whole clutch system. This is the clutch line I got. Uh, it's a doorman. Uh, I got a stupid sticker over the part number, but I would tell y'all guys the full part number. Sorry about that. But anyways, I'm gonna bench bleed this system. Uh, kind of the master cylinder clutch master is already in the truck right there, but. I saw a guy on YouTube, another guy, showing how to uh, bleed this system easier way before you actually mount it up to the transmission. So I'm going to try that. Alright, I got my old starter off. Got it right next to the new manual starter. And you can see the opening is bigger on the automatic. You can see more of that gear. And on the manual starter, you can only see about a third of the gear. So that's the biggest difference I'm seeing between the two of them. Other than that, they look identical. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they're interchangeable. I would, in my opinion, I would assume not. But like I said, on the forms, it said if you're going from a manual to automatic, you can reuse your starter. But in our case, where we're doing an automatic to manual swap, you got to get a manual starter. So anyways, let's get this plopped up in there and mount it up. It's pretty easy to get these starters in, especially when you don't have any heads on these trucks and then exhaust pipe to work around but like i said it's just two bolts just like obviously when you removed it and then mine is just a one wire starter and it connects to this post right here and uh just get it up in there make sure your uh bolts are lined up real good because you don't want to cross thread this aluminum housing or you're gonna have a bad day and you don't have to torque it like crazy. Um, you can put a little Loctite on them if you want. I usually don't. I don't have any problems with them backing out over the years. I'm a little leery of putting Loctite from steel to aluminum. Because you can snap these casings pretty easy. And uh, these transmissions are getting harder and harder to find. So at your discretion, you, you make that call. But. I'm going to finish tightening her down, getting her snugged up, and uh, hopefully she's all lined up right. We don't have to use any shims, but we'll see. Well, this was something I was worried about. I could not verify on the internet if this drive shaft can swap over from automatic to manual. I measured the transmission, and it was very similar in length to the automatic and the uh, um, shaft is going into the back of the transmission and it seems like a nice good fit tight or good tight fit <clears throat> my only question is is it going to be the right length so get here put on oh yeah there we go now i'll have to crawl down there and see how we're looking well, as of right now, it bolted, or I just got it sitting in there. Don't got it bolted down yet, but it looks like it may work. You can use your automatic 
drive shaft and this manual swap. If your transmissions are roughly the same length, I'll know for sure when I set this truck down and take it for a test drive because as your suspension travels, your drive shaft moves in and out. So we'll know if anything's binding pretty quickly. But as of right now, we're looking pretty good. But I'll let you guys know the final verdict on this drive shaft once we set her back down on the ground and give her a test drive. Clutch, master and slave cylinder is bled. Your slave cylinder's right there, what you're looking at. It's all installed. Got the line run. I will say that is not the correct line. Um, it works, but I think you can find a much better uh, line that uh, is a lot shorter. This one's much longer than it needs to be. I'll probably end up replacing it. Um, if not, it's the way it's ran. You can't see right now, but the way, the way it's ran, it's uh, against the frame rail and vibrations will eventually rub a hole through that plastic line. So I'm gonna see if I can't find a stainless line, like stainless braided line or the correct line. Um, but right now it works good enough that we can test it and take it for a test drive. But uh, this little piece right here, if you lose your original one, you can buy those uh, offline on eBay and stuff. There's one company that actually, uh, I guess it's like 3D prints them, and it's just as good as the OEM one. That's the only place I've found that has them. If you lose yours, you're ordering it from them or going to the junkyard, but that's the little retaining clip that, you know, holds the slave cylinder on the transmission. But anyways, I'll throw a little clip in here of it actually working. You can see it uh, pushing against the clutch fork and the depressing those clutch fingers in there. I, uh, because I already installed that master cylinder up there, I had to bench bleed it under here, but it's a pretty simple process. Just, uh, you can actually bench bleed the slave cylinder on your, uh, tabletop. You're just going to loosen the bleeder screw, pour a little fluid in there and pump this, uh, pump that rod back and forth and it'll expel the air out of there. And you just keep doing that until you're not getting air out of it. There's a little bleeder screw right on top there you'll see it it's a mine was a 5 30 seconds allen head yours may be different but go ahead and just bench bleed your uh, slave cylinder on the, the uh, table then you can come in here and install it and hook it up to your uh, uh, clutch hose then you're going to want to pour fluid up into your master cylinder crack that bleeder till that fluid comes pouring down through here and you get a good steady stream no air bubbles you can actually pump this rod as well while you're down here and get any more air out of it. And then uh, it's just like bleeding your brakes. You're going to get in the trunk, have somebody pump them up, come down here, let that uh, bleeder screw off for a few seconds, let the air come out, and just repeat that process. I'll show you how I do it by myself. The major, most important thing is to make sure that master cylinder stays full of fluid while you do this. You don't want to run it dry and get air back in your system. I just uh, come in here, I pump that clutch pedal 15, 20 times, and then uh, this is my helper tonight. You'll just depress that clutch, come in here. It's hard to do this one-handed, but I put this towel on here, that way I don't damage my seat. Well, you'll just use this, uh, You'll press that down and shove that piece of wood in there. And, uh, uh, there we go. Got the clutch pedal pressed down. It's against the seat, just like someone's pressing on it with their foot. And you go crawl back underneath the truck and let that bleeder screw off for a few seconds. Close it back up. You don't want to let it go completely dry. Come back up here, pull your board out, pump it up. Do it again, just like a uh, bleeding brake. Anyways, that's uh, it for tonight. I'm gonna crawl back under there and install my headers again. 
I found these nifty bolts online. They actually have a little Allen head socket inside the bolt because these headers are extremely hard to get on. Uh, these, uh, these heads, because the bolts are so close to the actual exhaust manifolds, you can't get a socket on there. I actually had to grind down one of my wrenches, but those are gonna make it a lot easier to get them installed, but I'm calling it a night. I've been out here for a few hours. We got her pretty much buttoned up. I uh, got the drive shaft installed, all that good stuff. All that's left is headers, and uh, I gotta figure out the neutral safety switch. Since I del deleted it, I'm gonna have to wire it so it lets the, no lets the truck know it's in neutral so I can start it. But other than that, uh, I think she's about ready to drop on the ground and go for a test drive. Fingers crossed, there's no issues. But uh, I'll pick up uh, tomorrow when it's uh, bright and sunny. It's about uh, 2 a.m. right now. But anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow. It's Friday night, the next day. Time to jump back on this old uh, girl and see if we can't get it wrapped up. At least cranked up tonight and uh, take her for a little test drive. I got some friends in the shop. Y'all wave. <laughs> it's Friday night. They ain't got no school tomorrow, so they're hanging out with me. And the wife's in her little room. You can't see it back there, but... She's in there sewing, so it's a good Friday night. Anyways, I'm gonna start on this neutral safety switch and getting it uh, wired up. I'll show you how I do that. So this is your neutral safety switch connector. It's a four pin connector. Um, depending on what transmission you have, I believe like the C6 uh, has, it's only a two pin connector. Um, Really, it just depends on what transmission you have. They're all a little bit different, but on the AOD transmissions, it's a four pin connector. Uh, these two wires are gonna be for your uh, reverse. The neutral safety switch wires are these blue wires and they have a uh, blue strip on them. So anyways, all you gotta do to bypass it is just cut these right here, leave you a little bit on there in case you ever have to reuse this uh, connector so I'm gonna cut it right here in the middle and you just splice them together and that will uh, trick this harness into thinking the uh, transmissions in neutral and that is how you bypass your neutral safety switch so that's all you're looking for right there just a little spliced in loop I put a heat shrink connector on it and a little bit extra heat shrink so it's gonna be underneath the truck and it'll be exposed to a lot of corrosion so Good news, got the headers on. And uh, while I had the truck five foot in the air, I decided to go ahead and change the fluid in the transmission. That way we got a good new fluid starting out. And I also went ahead and drained the motor of oil. That way it's got good fresh oil and we're starting fresh on it too. And it makes it a lot easier because this truck's so low to go ahead and uh, drain that oil while it's five foot in there. <laughs> so took advantage of that. The oil isn't gonna be here till tomorrow. I Amazon primed it and uh, I live way out here in the country. So I let them spend their gas money delivering stuff to me. But anyways, I got the headers on and all tightened down. Those are a bear. I hate installing those headers. So the, they just give you no room to install them bolts. The little aftermarket bolts that I bought with the Allen head uh, socket basically in them work pretty good. Um, not as good as quality as the ARP bolts that I had in it before. So I only use them on certain, certain spots where it's real hard to get a wrench on there. But uh, I'm trying to think, I got the battery all hooked up and installed. She's ready to rock and roll other than just filling the oil up tomorrow. All right, boys. Should be a good day if everything goes well. Amazon Prime brought me my oil. I'm going to fill her up. And uh, we're going to bump that starter and see what she does. So 
Fingers crossed, there ain't no problems, and uh, everything goes as planned. See if all our hard work came to fruition, and uh, we follow directions correctly. <laughs> and uh, hopefully, God will bless me, and this thing will uh, be driving down the road here in a couple minutes. Let's get her filled up with that good stuff, that full synthetic. And uh, I'm gonna jump in this thing, press that clutch down, make sure she's in neutral, and hit that key. So let me get it filled up, and we'll get her cranked up. I'm happy with that guys to be honest with you i'm pretty ecstatic that it works with no issues right off the rip um, i'll put some more road miles on her and see if anything arises but right now she's driving great i took her out on the main road uh, for a test got her all the way in the fourth and uh she was cruising definitely got to get some mufflers on it because <laughs> it's ridiculously loud with them open headers and uh Anyways, guys, hey, thanks for watching. If you watched this entire video, I appreciate it. I really hoped it helped y'all out and uh, gave you an idea of what it takes to do one of these swaps. If you would, if you appreciate all the hard work I put in this video, hit that subscribe button. That way you can come back, find it again if you ever need it, or uh, see the new content that I post on the channel. And I got a lot of old content on this truck and uh, OBS Fords, Bullnose Fords, Bron uh, Bricknose Fords, Chevrolets, Harleys, boats, four-wheelers, jet skis, you name it, we got it. Plus a lot of car show content, pinup contest. So we got it all on the channel. I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, smash that like button if, if, if you liked the video and it helped you out. That helps promote my content on YouTube and uh, gets me some views. I don't, I don't post ads or, uh, you know, do promotional stuff in my video. Only way I make any content off YouTube is just y'all's viewing and subscribing. So I appreciate everybody that's already subscribed and comments on the channel all the time and, uh, leaves me positive info and, and encouragement. I really appreciate you guys. I thank y'all a lot. And, uh, I guess I'll catch y'all in the next video. If you got any comments, questions, uh, want to add some stuff, want to add some info, Drop it down uh, below. Help other guys out if they're doing one of these swaps. If I missed something and you saw it, uh, you know, put it down there. Let us know. Maybe I missed something critical and I don't realize it yet. Bleep, bloop it down below. That way I can read it and uh, fix it. And uh, if y'all got any good links, uh, any good part numbers, 
anything you can help other guys out doing this swap, feel free to comment below. I read everything. I appreciate the people that do comment and uh, leave constructive criticism, you know, questions and uh, or people that just say, hey, really appreciate the video. Good job. Thank y'all, man. I really appreciate all y'all. So anyways, we'll catch y'all on the next video. Till next time. Peace. Let it out really slowly. Do I have to put the gas down? Uh -huh. Okay. Real slow. Hey. There you go. You got it. Give it gas, give it gas. <laughs> there you go, you got it. What year are we in now? Second. Give it more, not less. 